Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, um, welcome to this session. Uh, in the previous session, uh, we have discussed how a central bank uh, can uh, influence uh, its monetary base uh, by conducting open market operations uh, and discounting of loans to the commercial banks. In this session, we will discuss how increases the action uh, taken by the central bank, suppose through uh, open market operation or through the discounting of loans to the banking system and how does it leads to uh, further expansion of uh, money supply in the economy. So there we will discuss two important aspects, one is how it increases uh, it makes multiple expansion of deposits in the bank and then subsequently we will discuss uh, how does it leads to multiple expansion of uh, money supply in the economy. So as a motivational factor uh, let me put this data that is the total money supply in India on March 2022. Within this uh, you can see that the C. Uh, because money supply we have defined that money supply is equal to C plus uh, D uh, out of the C you can see that that is 14.9 percentage is the uh, C right that is the currency and the deposits you can see that the demand deposits uh, this is 8.1 8 and time deposit is 74.8 74 percentage so this constitute the total deposit uh, demand deposit and time deposit. And other deposit mainly done by the president, PM, ex PM, etc., uh, with the central bank that constitutes uh, uh, 0 0.2 percentage. So, what we, we are going to see that with this currency in circulation, uh, how they are able to attain uh, because this currency uh, is coming to the economy through the banking system and may, mainly through the banking system. Uh, and mainly through the open market operations and discounting of loans and then how it expand to this my, that the, this, this uh, amount. So let us analyze this process uh, using a T account. So the starting point here is that uh, let us uh, bring back what we discussed in the previous class that means suppose that a 100 dollar open market purchase by the central bank was conducted with the first bank that is one first, first bank is our representative commercial bank here that means uh, central bank has done an open market purchase and as a result and you know that the immediate effect is going to be a decline in the balance sheet the T account of the first bank we can see that the securities there is going to be a decline of 100 dollar and immediately you can see that the proceeds of the sale uh, it will be credited to the account of this first national bank by the central bank and th immediately there will be an increase in reserves of 100 dollar here right that is the first change that we can see here. So well, here subsequently you know that because the bank has no increase in checkable deposits because this money came to this bank, this first bank not by anyone deposited this amount to the bank but uh, because it sold, sold out its securities, government securities to the central bank fed and as a result there was an increase in this 100 dollar. So because of that uh, the first bank gave this 100 reserves, uh, it does not need to keep any cash reserve, required reserve out of it, the, uh, let us assume, take an assumption that suppose that the first bank gives this entire 100 reserve as 100 loan uh, to a borrower. So let us say that bank decides to make a loan in equal in amount to the 100, for example 100 million if you say you can add it if you want to increase the size, rise in excess reserve. So when the bank makes the loan, it set up 
how does a bank uh, gives loan so in order to give loan uh, it set up a checking account uh, for the borrower and puts the proceeds of the loan into this account so in this way uh, what we can see that the bank alters its t account balance sheet by increasing its liabilities uh, increasing its liabilities with a 100 uh, dollar of checkable deposit that is this one uh, you can see that the liability has increased uh, and the asset also increased by uh, 100 dollar so that means uh, we keep the initial one exactly like the securities reserves and also the loans it increases like this so the checkable deposits uh, increases right so in this way the bank alters uh, its balance sheet by increasing its liabilities with a uh, 100 dollar checkable deposit and at the same time increasing its assets uh, with a 100 dollar right so this is how the resulting t account looks like now see these reserves will not stay with the first bank for very long because they just they have given the loan and immediately what we are shown in the t account is that the immediate uh, how does immediately after that how does the t account looks like and this reserve that the even the money credited in the checkable deposit account uh, it won't stay there for a long now suppose that now the borrower purchase uh, whoever took this loan he withdraw this amount purchase goods and services from other individuals and corporation and they finance it by writing checks and those who got this check they deposit this check in another bank called bank A or just spend the money and those who get it deposit it in another bank. So that means this amount we are assuming here that uh, it is going to another bank right. So that means the $100. So look at the first national T account again that means uh, this reserve declines is disappear and we can also see that when they withdraw checkable deposits also uh, withdraw from this accounts what we can see here now we can see here is that the another bank the bandier banking system is com coming to the picture that means when the money has been deposited uh, deposited in bank a and how does the uh, banking system that the bank a here bank a's assets a t account look like so we can see here is that the 100 dollar deposit created by first national first bank uh, bank's loan is deposited at a bank a and that this bank and all other banks hold no excess reserve uh, then accordingly uh, the bank this bank's balance sheet is going to be that reserves is going to be increased in 100 dollar and checkable deposit is going to be an increase of 100 dollar and here uh, now, now what we can see here is that the bank A now their asset has increased and the liabilities has also has increased. So looking at the bank management principle that is it is no worth for because this bank has received a checkable deposits of $100 and since bank is a financial institution uh, it wants to maximize its profit plus you know that uh, in keeping these liabilities and that is this $100 deposit it has uh, it actually needs to pay some interest income to the depositors as well as uh, some operating costs obviously you know that uh, this bank will want to spend this money they employ this fund to make uh, income so in this case obviously in the, we can see that uh, the first there are different way it can spend uh, it can give a loan or it can buy a bond so several options are there uh, a whatever option we take the effect is going to be same here so let us see that suppose they give it a loan to a customer here so assume that here uh, the required reserve ratio is 10 percentage suppose the rr is 10 percentage so the bank a can only give loan of excess reserve uh, of 90 90 dollar right because in the previous case the first national bank it does not need to keep any rrr because that money has come from uh, the federal reserve system from the central bank by selling security but here uh, this 100 dollar out of this 100 dollar it cannot give the entire amount or oh, initially the anyway it is excess reserve only this actually we can say that uh, excess reserve then by keeping but out of this now 100 they have to keep 10 percentage as uh, the required reserve uh, that means 10 dollar so this bank can give only the excess reserve 90 as loan 
So in this process, let us discuss that the reserve ratio is required reserve ratio is uh, 10 percentage. So this bank will now find itself with a 10 million increase in required reserve leaving uh, a 90 million of excess reserve. So it does not want to hold excess reserve, it will make loans for the entire amount uh, is loan. Then as a result, what is going to happen? It is when uh, balance sheet T account now looks like that the reserves uh, it becomes out of 100 now it become only uh, 10 that is the required reserve and it does not want to keep uh, it does not want to hold any excess reserve that is our assumption here for sake of simplicity and it gives the remaining 90 as loans that is also an asset and the liabilities that we have seen here that remain same here that is 100 uh, dollar. Now when this loan, suppose this loan is received by a borrower, another borrower, uh, if the money spent by the borrower is to bank A, lent the 90 million is deposited in another bank, say such as for example, bank B and this amount that the loan through the economic transaction, uh, we are going to see that this has been uh, deposited in another bank such as bank uh, B here. So, the T account for the bank will be uh, like this that means the immediately when the amount is uh, deposited here the reserves will increase. Reserve do not call it as required reserve just any money directly coming uh, it will be just we are going to call that uh, this is reserve. It can be excess reserve and uh, required reserve but here we can see that this is nothing but excess reserve uh, 90 uh, increase in 90. And the liabilities obviously you know that somebody depositing this money immediately uh, the checkable deposit increase by 90 dollar that means uh, 90 is the liability. So, equivalent increase of reserve that is 90 is the uh, that is the increase in asset. And again what we can here see that the checkable deposits uh, in the banking system have risen by another 90 million. So, what we can see that for a total increase of 190 million, so that means 100 million at a bank A and now that is this one that the 100 uh, million in bank A and 90 million uh, in uh, not million I am just adding million then we can just say 190, uh, 90 in bank B plus in the, that uh, 90 million at a bank B. So, in fact, the distinction between bank A and bank B is not necessary to uh, obtain the same result uh, on the overall expansion of deposit. Suppose if the borrower from bank A write checks to someone who deposit them at bank A, the same change in deposit occurs. So, the T accounts for the bank B would just apply to bank A uh, in and its checkable deposit would increase by the total amount of uh, 190. What this bank B now want to do? So, again the point here is that uh, bank B here, bank B uh, it received that 90 million that is the liability. Anyway, it wants to employ this fund and you know that by now uh, it cannot lend the entire amount. Because it, it, suppose it decide that it, it does not want to keep any excess reserve. Suppose excess reserve is equal to 0, then it can out of this 90. Uh, 10 percentage is the reserve required reserve ratio that is uh, 10 percentage that comes uh, 9 and remaining 81 uh, 81 it can give us loan. So, how does the, uh, when it is making a loan the T account look like this that the asset uh, reserve is 9 and loans are loans is uh, 81 and the liability that we have seen that it is uh, 90. Okay, so now if the borrower, let us continue this story that means uh, if the borrower puts the loan in bank B and this bank uh, will only be able to give loans to excess reserve uh, that 81 which will be deposited in another bank and so on. So, we continue this story uh, in a way that the 80 million spent by borrower from bank A will be deposited in another bank that is bank C. So, Consequently, uh, from the initial suppose they put this money now they put in uh, bank uh, C, those who got loan from bank B and we see as you see that when because this money the those who get this money will be spending uh, may be spending by cash and then someone will be depositing it in another bank or will be directly giving uh, issuing a check uh, those who get suppose due to this financial transaction uh, those who get this check will be depositing in bank C. 
So consequently, uh, what we can see that from the initial 100 increase of reserve in the banking system, the total increase of checkable deposit in the system so far is 271. Right. How does it look like? It goes like that, that the checkable deposit would increase uh, so far by the total amount of 271. Uh, it keeps increasing like this. So following the, the same reasoning, if all banks, so assuming that if all banks make loans for the full amount of their excess reserve, that means without keeping any excess reserve, they keep all amount, they only keep uh, the required reserve ratio and they lend make loans for the full amount their excess reserve further increment in checkable deposit will uh, continue at bank c bank d e and so on right so therefore the total increase in deposits from the initial 100 increase in the reserve uh, will be equal to 1000 so the increase is tenfold here which is a reciprocal of the 10 percentage uh, reserve requirements so it looked like this, we started with the first bank, then increase in deposit was 0 there because they got the money from by selling security to the Fed and then we can see that the increase in reserve, uh, we say that here is 0. Uh, then the bank A got uh, 100, dollar, 100, then bank B we are seeing that assuming that RR is equal to a 10 percentage that is our assumption then we can see that uh, this sequence of events uh, the increase in deposits will be like this right so in correspondingly we can see that when here 100 increase in uh, deposit then we can see that increase in reserve is uh, 10 uh, here in this case increase in reserve is 9 uh, increase in reserve is 8, 8.10 like that. So at the end, the total for all banks, we can say that if the cash reserve ratio, required reserve ratio is 10 percentage, the total increase in deposit is going to be uh, 1000. So the corresponding increase in reserve, uh, that the reserve with the banking system, the reserve with the central bank as part of the RR, as part of the RR required reserve is going to be uh, 100, right. So here putting this one, what we can say that how, what is how this increase in deposit 100 happen, that we can write in the del D that the change in the deposit that is 100 uh, is equal to del R times 1. Uh, 1 is equal to uh, 100 dollar that is the first one. Uh, second one uh, what you can say that this one has increased that is del D 90 happened here uh, is equal to del R times uh, 1 minus R that means 100 times uh, 0 0.9 that is the 90 percentage. So this is uh, by multiplying we are getting uh, change in deposit is equal to uh, 90 and in this case uh, third 81 we can see that is getting 81 but that means del r times uh, 1 minus r uh, square uh, this is the process. So this is if we continue this this is the process happening here what we can see here is that this is an infinite series the sum of the infinite series is del d. Uh, is going to be del r times 1 by 1 minus uh, times uh, 1 minus r. So, this is the uh, del d. So, then del d the, we can see that this is we can see that finalizing we can shorting we can see that del d is equal to del r times uh, 1 by r. So, here uh, this is actually del d divided by del r uh, is equal to 1 by the reciprocal of uh, required reserve, uh, this is nothing but the deposit uh, multiplier, this is uh, the deposit uh, multiplier here. So we can see here that the symbol deposit multiplier uh, is equal to uh, 1 by uh, r, that is the uh, symbol uh, deposit uh, multiplier. So simply we can say that this is the reciprocal of required uh, reserve ratio. So in addition the same uh, formula we can also derive uh, it using uh, algebra as well. So our assumption here is that in order to do that let me say that our assumption that banks do not hold any 
excess reserve uh, means that the total amount of required reserves in the banking system RR will equal the total reserves in the banking system. That means total reserve R is equal to only reserve uh, required reserve not the excess reserve. So, that is the our assumption. So, that the required reserve is equal to uh, the total R. We assume here that the excess reserve this bank keeps is going to be 0. So, the total amount of required reserves equal the required reserve ratio RR times that is the small r, r times uh, the total amount of checkable deposit. So, we can say that RR is going to be R that is the required reserve ratio the percentage R times D. So, substituting R times D for uh, RR uh, because we already say that RR is nothing but equal to R. So, we can rewrite it actually that um, R uh, times uh, D uh, is equal to R because we assume uh, excess reserve is equal to uh, 0 here and dividing uh, both sides of the this equation uh, by R we are going to get uh, D is equal to uh, 1 by R uh, times R. And then uh, what we are going to see that we are going to see the change uh, in D due to change in R, right. So, that is the change in R is our starting point. So, taking changes in both sides of this equation, then just using delta to indicate a change, we can say that uh, del D uh, is equal to 1 by R uh, times uh, del R. So, here you can see that um, uh, del D by del R. Uh, is equal to 1 by r. This is nothing but the multiplier here, right. The deposit, uh, this is the uh, nothing but the deposit multiplier uh, we have derived here. So, uh, finally, we can say that del D is equal to uh, uh, 1 by r and then this 1 by r, this 1 by r is nothing but the deposit uh, multiplier. This is what uh, we have derived here. What we have seen here is that the multiple increase uh, in deposits uh, generated from an increase in the banking system's reserve is called a uh, symbol deposit multiplier or more generally the symbol deposit multiplier equals the reciprocal of the required reserve ratio. So, so, this is what we have seen. So, I am just putting everything in a slide that means del D is equal to 1 by R times del R. Uh, with a, all that a del D means change in total checkable deposits, uh, R is the required reserve ratio and del R the change in reserves for the banking systems. In our example, uh, this one is uh, $100. So, what are the critique of this model? So, the thing here is that uh, what we can see uh, our model of uh, deposit uh, multiple creation seems to indicate that Federal Reserve is able to exercise complete control over the level of checkable deposits by setting the required reserve ratio and the level of reserve. But the actual uh, creation of deposit is much less mechanical uh, than the symbol model indicates. So, what we see here that we assume that ER is equal to 0 here that is our assumption. We assume that ER is equal to 0, but it is not necessary. Uh, we have seen uh, in the previous class sessions that suppose the it also the year it depends uh, how much year the banking system want to keep it also depends on the the liquidity management of the bank suppose if they see a liquidity crisis and if see if they see some kind of uncertainty uh, in the economy that there is unexpected deposit outflow in that case you can see that this ER may not be not going to be 0, uh, it is going to be ER is going to be uh, greater than 0, right. At that time ER is going to be greater than 0. And similarly, we have seen that in the beginning that the bank A, bank A, the proceeds from bank A's 9 million loans, uh, what if, if the proceeds from bank A's uh, 90 million loans not deposited but are kept in currency. We have seen that the 90 million uh, from bank A, bank A. Uh, this loan, this we have taken that is bank A, uh, this loan, uh, those who got this loan, instead of spending this money and depositing in bank B, what if they keep uh, the entire amount, entire 90 uh, as uh, cash with themselves, that is one. 
or what if they keep some part out of this maybe they keep uh, 20 as cash uh, C 20 as C and remaining 70 they put it in the bank that means they spend in the economy so then subsequently it go to the other bank so that means the multiple expansion uh, that we have seen here it may not be that great as we saw here so it won't be uh, exactly this 90 so that means in the beginning itself uh, it is going to be only 70 so the expansion starting from this 70 so 70 it goes to another bank bank c uh, bank c what we can see that in the bank c uh, they get only uh, 70 dollar and not 90 and again they if they spend suppose 10 percentage is the crr and if they keep crr 7 7 is the required reserve so they can spend lend uh, 63 7 plus uh, 63 they can lend what if out of the 7 they see that okay this is uh, rr this is rr plus they also think that they want to keep some uh, excess reserve excess reserve sub to suppose they want to keep uh, for example uh, 20 so that means uh, if they keep 20 as the excess reserve uh, then they will be having left out with only uh, 43 right so that means the way we saw in the formula uh, that means uh, the money will be expanding uh, the way the exactly the reciprocal of uh, the reserve ratio but it is not necessary that it may not happen in the same way and in another words currency does not lead to suppose uh, the households that those who got this loan if they keep uh, want to keep more and more currency uh, if they want to keep more and more currency with them so we know that uh, currency does not lead to multiple deposit expansion uh, whereas deposits do. Thus, if some proceeds from loans are not deposited in banks but instead are used to raise the holdings of currency then we can see that less multiple expansion occurs overall and the money supply does not increase by the amount predicted by uh, our symbol model of uh, deposit creation. Right. So, we can see that in that way we saw that here uh, deposit multiplier suppose we saw the deposit multiplier that is 1 by r uh, is equal to then we saw that is going to be 10 right. So, 10 is the multiplier that we saw here but if the if banks began to keep uh, excess reserve greater than 0 and also people they increase the currency holding and this one if they keep on increase if they keep the increase in uh, currency holdings then there will be less multiple expansion or uh, occurs uh, it may not increase to from 100 to 1000 and that means uh, it will be less than that means uh, the multiplier value is not going to be 10. So, another situation that we ignored in this model is, uh, is one in which banks do not make loans or buy securities in the full amount of their excess reserve. Suppose bank A desires to hold on to all 90 million of its excess reserve, no deposits will be made in bank B and this will stop the deposit creation process. The total increase in deposits will be only 100 million suppose if bank A. Uh, does not make a loan that means if the bank A does not give any loan so that means the total multiple expansion of the deposit uh, will not happen whatever the initial 100 uh, dollar came to the bank through the open market operation it just just stay there right it will be only that much. So, that the total increase in deposit will be only 100 million not the 1000 million increase in our example. So, hence uh, if bank choose to hold on to all or some of their excess reserve what we can see here that the full expansion of deposits predicted by the symbol model of multiple deposit creation uh, again does not occur. So, what we can see from here that our example from our discussion that the Fed is not the only player whose behavior uh, influence uh, the level of deposits and therefore the money supply. So, in the symbol deposit multiplier we simply take that symbol deposit multiplier is equal to 1 by r. So, based on this we only see that actually is mainly the central bank decides everything, but we can also see that other stakeholders also come in the picture that is the depositors those who decide that they have to deposit another is the borrowers what if the people the people individual and institution not borrowing similarly the banking system their financial position their bank management uh, how much excess reserve they want to keep so this actually lead to our another model an extension of this model that is called money multiplier uh, which we are going to discuss in the next session 
um, thank you for watching this video and uh, we will see you in the next session. Thank you.